It's so great to be here. I, I feel like I've come home. You have come home, dear. And we couldn't be happier. I'll say, AJ and I have heard all about you. I can't wait till the grown-ups go to bed so we can really... <laughs> <laughs> you led me on some merry chase. I didn't think I was going to catch up with you for a while. Sorry, had I known, I would have left a trail of breadcrumbs behind me. <laughs> <laughs> or poker chips. Hmm? Well, all's well that ends well. Yeah, that remains to be seen. You've certainly grown into a very handsome young man. Haven't you, Monica? <clears throat> Are you ill? <clears throat> you hardly believe it. What's the matter? Uh, very difficult to explain, actually. You know, you've been acting strangely ever since you came home. Has something happened in the hospital? No, really, this came on rather suddenly. <laughs> Why did you call Ned Ward? What? Oh, oh, well, I must have been thinking of someone else. Who? Well, it certainly was Ned. There he is. And there he is. There's my other son. This is Alan Jr. AJ, say hello to your cousin Ned. Hi. Pleasure. Oh, man. I have wanted to meet you ever since I first got interested in girls. Oh? Well, yeah. I mean, they, <laughs> they tell me you're an expert on women. Who tells you that? Um... Well, I don't know. They don't really actually come right out and say it, but I catch the drift. Um, so, you can teach me your secret? Well, there aren't any secrets. Um, the trick is to know what you want and, and don't stop until you get it. No matter how many hurdles the lady might put in your way. Yeah, but how do you know if she's ever really interested in the first place? Oh, you can tell. Spoken like a true quarter man. <laughs> Have you been? You are being so rude to our nephew. Well, I had to go up and freshen up. Well, lighten up a little, will you? Please, he's family. Try and be nice to him. Oh, really? Really. Ned, you really should have let your mother know where you were. She's been frantic. I know. I'm sorry, Grandmother. No, don't apologize to us. Talk to Tracy. Well, I never meant to upset her. Frankly, I didn't think she cared what I did. Listen, she cared enough to send me after you. I know, and I apologize for putting you through that trouble. I guess I sort of uh, shook up the whole family, huh? Yes, I'd say you did, yes. Well, I need a drink. Hey, Ned, is your dad really a prince or a king or something? <laughs> no, um, he's, uh, he's a lord, Lord Ashton. Does that mean we have to call you your honor? <laughs> no, his supreme majesty will do. No, I'm just plain folks. Well, what have you been doing with yourself the last few months? Well, a little of this, a little of that. Uh, traveling a lot, meeting some very interesting people. Oh, yeah, beautiful women, I'll bet. One or two. Gambling? Well, uh, enough to keep my hand in, but I don't play the tables nearly as much as I used to. Mm. I enjoy far more risky games of chance. Why don't you try the stock market? I might do that. Uh, what are your plans, Ned? For now, I'm just content to take things as they come. I've been thinking about settling down. Who knows, maybe I'll just decide to do that right here. <coughs> you all right, Monica? <coughs> yes. <clears throat> Must have choked. Uh, when is dinner? You better back off on those drinks, I'll tell you. You're going to undo all the good you accomplished at the spa. Aunt Monica went to a spa? Huh? Well, why would she need to do that? She looks great. You should have seen her before she left. Oh, well, thank you so much. You're so tactful. Any spa that can produce results like this must have something special going for it. Excuse me, Cousin Ned. I saw your tennis racket in the hall. Are you any good? Well, I used to think so. And a couple of weeks ago, I really met my match. I lost my shirt, literally. And then some. Dinner is served. Oh. Okay, boys? <clears throat> Mother. Yeah. Thank God I'm not the only sane one in this family. That bum has taken everyone in. Everyone but us. And at least you and I see right through him. Hmm? dorm room at boarding school by tying uh, sheets together to make a rope? Absolutely not. I was sneaking into the girls' dorm room nearby. So. Oh. <laughs> okay, guys, everybody up to bed. School tomorrow. Oh, Dad, come on. It's his first night. Can't we stay up a little longer? Yeah, we've got a million questions for Cousin Ned. Yeah, well, you can ask him tomorrow. He's not going anywhere. There'll be plenty of time. Come on, guys, All let's right. go. Good, good night. night. Good night, fellas. Good, good night, night, guys. Good night, night Paul. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mom. Good so, night. anybody good night. for night, Kev? Good night, good night. Well, I think Ned must be exhausted after all his travels. He'd probably like to call it a night. Actually, I am worn out. And as Uncle Alan said, I'm not going anywhere. I think I will turn in. 
Well, the gatehouse is all ready for you, dear, and if you need anything, just call Jennings. Thanks, I'll do that. Good night. Good night. Grandfather, I know you and Mother have had your differences. Yeah, to put it mildly. I just hope you and I can uh, start fresh, let bygones be bygones. Well, it's a noble idea. Impossible to achieve, but uh, admirable nonetheless. I say good night, dear. Uh, yeah, good oh, night. And Ned, don't forget to call your mother and make sure that she knows that you're safely here. Okay, I won't. Give your hand with your luggage. I, I could use one. Okay, great. We have to talk. I know, I can't believe this either. What an amazing coincidence. <clears throat> Change your mind about the nightcap? Uh, no, I'm coming. Okay. It's wonderful to see you again, Armonica. It's been too long. Yeah. Oh, thank you. What? This is the first time we've been alone since you went to the spa. Oh, I hadn't really thought about it. I missed you. You couldn't have. I mean, you were off chasing Ned. That was then. This is now. I missed you. And I am probably the last person to pay you a compliment, but Monica, I've got to tell you something. You look absolutely stunning. Well, thank you, I think. I know that I scoffed at the idea of you first going off to a, a fat farm, but I'll tell you, I can't argue with the results. They have, they have worked miracles with you. Excuse me, that's not to say that you weren't attractive before, because you were, you are, you always have been, but there is something very different about you, Monica. I, I, you are so vibrant. What on earth did they do to you at Green Meadows? Well, I'll never tell. Well, whatever it is, I couldn't be more pleased. <clears throat> Hello? Hello, I'm Dr. Quartermain. This is Melissa McKee. Uh, yeah, good evening. Uh, hi, um, I just thought you should know, A.J. left his books here at Kelly's. Um, if you want, Greg and I could come by on the way home and drop them off. Um, no, no, that, that won't be necessary. But thank you, anyway. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah. What's the matter? That was the hospital. I have to go check on a patient. What a rotten timing. Yes, isn't it, though? Don't be long, will you? Well, I can't make any promises. You don't... You don't wait up for me. I'm going to wait up for you. I'll be here with bells on, lady. Mm. Well, well, well. Mm, mm, mm. To the new Monica. I just heard a car pull out. Couldn't have been Ned by any chance. No, it was Monica on our way back to the hospital. Uh, I knew it was too good to be true. Will you get off Ned's back? You can't go around blaming him for his mother's misadventures. Who can't? You can't. You know, the two of us had a long time to talk on our way back to poor Charles, and that kid has been through hell these past few years. Why couldn't he have stayed there? Father, how would you like to grow up without a soul to rely on, just totally and utterly on your own? No, you're the wrong person to ask. You'd love it. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be nice to him. I'm determined to make him feel a welcome member of this family. show up. Isn't life strange? Who would ever have guessed? You insolent little gigolo. Now I want you off my property and I want you out of this town tonight. How dare you, How dare you deceive me? I didn't. Don't touch me. Don't you touch me ever again. Monica, would you please just listen to me? I have heard enough, Ward. You think I used an alias to con you? Well, of course you did. You couldn't very well come up to me and say, Hi, I'm your nephew, Ned. How about a roll in the hay? I didn't want anyone at the spa to know who I was. My real name carries a ton of baggage, and honestly, I didn't want to have to live up to those expectations. You ought to know something about that. So I called myself Ward. I was using that name long before you showed up. But you lied to me! No, I didn't. You had to, and don't you lie to me now. You had to have known who I was. How could I? Green Meadows never uses last names. Well, you could very well have gone to the files and looked it up. Monica, why would I have bothered? I, I had no reason to believe that we were related. 
All I knew, I swear, all I knew is what I could see for myself. That you were a fun, bright, very sexy lady. We had a wonderful time together. I never wanted it to end. I wish we were back there right now in the courts. Or in the stables. You left me, remember? If I would have known where to find you, I would have shown up on your doorstep the very next day. Why is that so hard for you to believe? How can you be so cavalier? We're related. I've had an affair with my nephew. It's no big deal. It's not as if we're blood relatives. Well, there's going to be blood shed if Alan ever finds out. Why should he? He doesn't have to if we never set eyes on each other again. Well, I guess we may as well go ahead and tell him the truth then. I kill. Look, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Don't you bother unpacking because you aren't going to be staying here. Uh, fine. Well, that's enough shop talk. How about a brandy for starters? Oh, I'm going to pass. I really have an early morning, Alan, okay? Monica. Listen. Please. I know what's bothering you. You do? Yes. It's Ned, isn't it? I mean, you never expected him to show up here, did you? Oh, you can see You can say that again. Really, Monica, I know what's going on. What do you mean? Well, I mean, his appearance absolutely floored you. You don't have to be a genius to figure out why. Oh, why? Well, I mean, it's obvious that you don't trust the young man, nor do you like him. Well, yes, you're, you're, you're probably right, yes. Listen, you don't have to beat around the bush with me. I can see right through you. I mean, it's so plain. You never had any love lost with Tracy. You didn't like her, and now you're projecting your feelings from her onto her son. Well, yeah, that, that could be true. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced it is. And you know, hmm? you're right. You're absolutely right. I have been judging Tracy right through Ned. That is true. But you have to look at it this way. The way that young man is, the apple does not fall too far from the tree. <laughs> Sorry for being a bit out of touch, Mother, but I've been pretty busy. Yes, I'm in Port Charles now. Things couldn't be better. Yes, I've met Monica. I realized only too soon there's no love lost between you two. No, actually, uh, I have a hunch she won't give me the slightest bit of trouble. In fact, we're well on our way to being the best of friends. I started wandering from place to place. Morning, everybody. Morning, Uncle Alan. Morning, son. Morning, Mother. Good morning, dear. <laughs> Have I interrupted an important conversation? No, you haven't. I think it was very important. No, oh, I think so, too. He's been explaining why he's been so footloose these past years. Well, I'd like to discuss his future, not his past. Not here, you don't. I'm not sure I have much of a future, Uncle. Of course you do. Right Believe me. Now, I've been giving it quite a bit of thought. Yes, I have too. So have I. I'd like him to marry a nice girl and settle down. <laughs> At the moment, Grandmother, I couldn't afford to keep a rabbit. Uh, marry a rich, nice girl, huh? Oh, Edward. Well, I'm being practical. At the moment, I'm the one that's being practical. Now, I really have been giving your uh, future quite a bit of thought. Well, I certainly like to hear any comments you might have, huh? Well, how about if you come down to the hospital, say, around noon, and we'll find some nice place to go to lunch, and we'll have a nice leisurely talk. That'd be great. Are you sure you can spare the time? Absolutely. Well, that, I, I really appreciate it. No problem at all. I look forward to seeing you. I all gotta right. go to work. Looking forward to it. Okay. What are you doing? You're just cozy up to him. I want him out of here. He's even got Edward wrapped around his little finger. Oh, you know, Father? Yes, I know that he's a sap for flattery. He's a nice kid. Don't, don't call him a kid. Why is it you don't like him, Monica? <laughs> I don't like him because, because he is a bad influence on A.J. That's not true. Yes, it is true. It is too true. All A.J. talks about is girls, and he's only been doing that since he was listening to Ned. It's in his genes, Monica. He gets it from his father. No, that's not true. 
No, Lila has told me time and time again that you were very shy around girls when you were his age. Well, I was shy, but I did a lot of thinking. Look at them. Everything has changed around here. I hate it. You are so gorgeous now when you get angry. What if they, listen to me, what if they do to you at that spot? Whatever it is, though, you got to keep it up. It's just wonderful. i got to go. Where's my purse? Oh. I'll tell you, by the time I was 18, the mothers had to lock up their daughters. I don't want to hear about it, Helen. I really don't want to hear about it. Well, I'd certainly be willing to try. Amy Vining? Oh, nice yeah. Nice name. Uh, that's Miss Vining. I don't guess it says that, but you can call me Amy. And you're? Ned Ashton. Oh, um, your uncle just called down here a minute ago. He's on his way down. You're a quarter me. My mother. Aha, uh -huh, Ned. You're prompt. That's a good sign. Oh, well. Hi, Steve. Oh, Steve, I want you to meet my nephew, Ned. This is my boss, Steve Hardy. How do you do, sir? Tracy's son. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. Alan, I have to meet with you right away. We have some serious budget problems. Do we really? Mm-hmm. I'm oh. Monica. Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm on my way to the cafeteria. Oh, hang on for one second, will you, Monica? Well, all right, bye. Uh, uh, listen, I've got to meet with Steve, and, um, well, I've got reservations over at the Port Charles Hotel, and would you mind having lunch with Ned, because I can't go? Alan, actually, I'm very busy. What are you talking about? You're on your way to the cafeteria. Well, I would enjoy having lunch with you, Aunt Monica. Come on, don't disappoint him. <clears throat> uh, Alan. Yeah, you have a good time. Come on, Steve. I would imagine you have a few things to talk over with me. Yes, you imagined right. Quite a few things. Let me get my jacket. 